I'm Tom Gans. I work at UCLA in the Department of Medicine and Pathology. Dr. Thomas Gans has published numerous articles on iron biology in blood. I publish in blood on generally on issues about iron regulation and anemia. Uh, and also it ties into inflammation because inflammation affects the flow of iron in the body and affects the production of red cells. So the three things that we focus on in the laboratory are iron, red blood cells, and inflammation, and how the three interact under different circumstances. We are still learning about how iron flow is regulated in the body. It, so we did not know of the existence of an iron regulatory hormone um, until about the year 2000. The discovery of hepcidin is an interesting story. It was discovered in my lab, but we did not immediately know how exactly it contributed to the functioning of the human body. And the working out of what this new substance was doing in the body took another three or four years, and it involved many other participants. But two groups in France were very instrumental in figuring out what this new hormone did. And then a second hormone was also discovered in my lab about two or three years ago by a very talented uh, French postdoc, Leon Kautz. And that new hormone, which we call erythroferone, is generated by red blood cell precursors in the marrow to regulate iron flow. So it's a hormone that red blood cell precursors use so that they can get more iron from the system to make hemoglobin, to fill the developing red cell with hemoglobin. That's only the beginning of the story. So we need to figure out how this hormone works. Now that we have erythroferone, we need to find out what its receptor is, how that signal from the hormone is transmitted to uh, result in altered movement of iron. In this case, how erythroferone regulates a second hormone called hepcidin. We need to find out how that actually works in molecular terms and perhaps what we can do to use this to some kind of a therapeutic advantage. We are looking for ways of manipulating uh, these systems so that we can develop some new drugs in this space that would allow us to treat disease. For the next two or three years, that is going to keep me occupied. The second thing that I am interested in that is also going to keep me occupied is the connection between iron and infection. We discovered that patients who have too much iron aboard are predisposed to certain kind of infections, and we want to understand why that is. And the third thing that's going to keep me occupied is the unfinished business of anemia of inflammation, how inflammation causes anemia. We know that it in part involves hepcidin, which is the first hormone that we discovered, but there are two other effects of inflammation. One is directly on red cell production, and the second one is on the survival of red cells in circulation. So during inflammation, red cell production goes down and the red cells don't live as long. And so how that exactly happens is still not a completely understood area. And, and I would like to make another contribution in that space if I have the time to do that.